Hi, Christina here, founder of Liberate. I wanted to let you know that all of our amazing practitioners, healers, and intuitives are available for remote sessions. And we are continuously adding new classes, workshops, and meditations to serve you every week. Thank you for joining us, and I hope that we can help you liberate yourself. Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. We're welcoming back Travis Taylor here. For those that didn't see his podcast in the past, uh, please, you know, if you fall in love with the information Travis provides, go and search through. He's an amazing healer, channel, um, and, you know, does some cool amazing healing with dragon energy i mean phoenix energy and i was like the phoenix not the dragon um but the phoenix energy and it's just a really unique um type of healing modality that not many people i've i haven't known anybody it's like uh, his own style uh, but today we're going to be talking specifically about um being cracked open in a different way of looking at life events and he is one of the authors in this best-selling book that's available on Amazon called The Last Breath. And so, uh, Travis, thank you for coming today. You're so welcome. It's so exciting to be here. And, you know, when I was asked to participate as part of the authors that put together this compilation book, one, a compilation book is pretty uncommon in the industry. A lot of times you get one author writing one book about themselves or a subject. So it was a great opportunity to collaborate with a lot of different authors. And when I was asked to put together the, the story, we didn't want to put the same type of stories together, just about, you know, proof of the, the afterlife, which is essentially a lot of what people need to hear and do want to hear about. But when I was thinking about what kind of story kind of motivated me in my life and what was sort of an important lesson for me to learn, I thought about the concept of being broken open and in particular, we've often lived through like the dark nights of the soul. We have so many experiences in our lives where we fall in love and something happens or we lose someone that we we care about and we feel like perhaps we've been broken down or broken apart. We talk about that. My heart's broken. And I think about that concept and I think about the concept. It isn't like it's broken apart or broken down, but the true reality of, the, of, the, of our lives is that we're broken open. We're broken open to uh, receive more love, to learn mm. what lessons is it that we came to learn to let us grow as a soul and to learn more compassion or more understanding or more uh, self-determination. And so this one story that I include in the book is uh, it starts with the death of my mother and her last words to me, which were the next time you see me, I'll be happy. And we had planned her suicide. She had asked me mm -hmm. to help her and she was dying of cancer and she didn't want to die slowly in the way that she would have had she gone back into the hospital. And it was before assisted suicide was legal in Washington. And wow. she knew that I would help her. And and when she asked me to help her plan her suicide, you know, it was not easy, of course. And well, it was, I wouldn't even be able to imagine. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it, but it was something that it, at some level, and I think I would say now at the soul level, I knew that it was something that we had agreed on before. Um, we had a soul contract. Uh, I would later learn to describe what happened in those terms. But in that moment, I knew that she needed my help and she had thanked me for what she called the ultimate gift. Now, I didn't realize that wasn't going to be my worst day of my life because I went through my own uh, addiction cycle after that, uh, going from alcoholism to meth um, addiction. And uh, shortly after my mom's death, my boyfriend at the time, who was my fiance, broke up with me. And so I so it was like a snowball of a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of cracking open. <laughs> right. And in those in those moments of pain and suffering and, and lack of coping skills, I didn't know how to treat myself. I didn't know how to love myself. And it wasn't until I got into treatment. Uh, rehabilitation for the first time that my mother visited me in a dream and in that dream she was happy and we were golfing something we did when we were alive and she was alive something we love to do and um, she had hit 
go holes in one at this three par if you're familiar with golf uh you you, you want to get the the ball in the hole in as few shots as possible and we she had hit the ball in the hole and i had hit close by when i was hitting and what i realized when we got closer to the hole all of the balls that i had hit had gone also into the hole which was wonderful and in, in my mom had said to me in the dream um uh you never, something to the effect of, you know, uh, you just have to give it a shot. You can never, you can never fail if you just give it a shot. And, wow. um, and then when we were standing there, I, people were coming out of the, uh, towards me in the dream and all wearing white. And I realized it was everyone that I had ever known in my life, family members, friends. And all of a sudden I felt this enormous love in my in my heart which was something I had actually not really been super familiar with and I woke up crying I was really overwhelmed and I was still in treatment and it was my 33rd birthday at the time and I went outside to have a smoke I was a smoker at the time and I looked up into the sky and I saw Orion's belt in the sky and then I felt my mother's presence next to me and it was the first time I had felt her presence since her death and in that moment I knew that she wasn't dead and she wow. had called me by my childhood nickname, Duder, uh, which she used to <laughs> call me when I would play baseball as a kid. And um, and I just knew it was going to be OK. Wow. Yeah. And it was after that that I took a Reiki class and learned that I had capacities to see things that were beyond the physical realm and help people heal their lives. And so the idea, you know, with with struggling in my own life with with addiction and ADHD and PTSD from a birth trauma and my own <laughs> processes, I realized, you know, it wasn't like I was broken down and, and broken apart. I was really just, it was opportunities for me to learn to love myself more. Which is a really, I mean, for all the times that I've heard so many different like advice or self, different ways of looking at things. This concept of being cracked open in the way that you explain it, I don't know, like it, it hits with me and I don't know the viewers that are listening, like hearing that about, it's kind of that, that say, saying that life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you, but really yeah. like taking that and these pain pieces, because you're right, everybody, myself included, anybody that goes through a pain, pain is experience, they feel like a part of them went missing. You know, I lost a part of myself. I lost this aspect of myself. You know, part of me was got lost when that relationship ended or that job ended or this happened or this person passed away. Like, you know, and it's almost almost like there's this fractal type of metaphors that we have in this collective of these pieces that kind of run away and that anytime it's cracking it's bad right and in the way to you're looking at it in this perspective which I, I truly subscribe to is that no this is making more room and more in that it's almost like what I'm getting is and for anybody that works out you'll get it and I know it's, uh, Travis is also very heavily involved in at the at athletics but when when you work out and you do you, when you push yourself and you're doing bicep curls or whatever you're doing, you literally are ripping apart the muscles and then protein and stuff fill in the space to make it bigger. And so you're, you're cracking and pulling out apart, but you're actually becoming stronger physically and more mass is building as a result. But it's creating these tears so that you can fill in the space. Right. Yeah. And you and, get stronger. And so I'm kind of looking at like I'm seeing this in my visual in my mind right now, this heart that's just like cracked, cracked. But then there's this space in between because it's cracked, but it gets filled in. So the heart becomes bigger or the life experience becomes more or it becomes deeper. Yeah. And I think I so agree with that because I believe that most of our consensus reality is that we learn by contrast. So we learn what we really want because we experience things that we don't. 
And so it's all about perspective. And so when you're in the middle of this dark night of the soul, when you feel like you're alone and you feel like you have this sense of loss and, you, and a lot of it is just our is really our perspective. And so when we think about it, not from a lower self perspective about this is happening to me, I'm a victim. I'm, I am now basically giving all of my power away to some other reality that I don't have access to. If instead I say, how is this serving me? Yeah. How is this encouraging me to shift my perspective into one that might be a little bit bigger at the soul level? Because we are infinite beings and we did choose this lifetime to live the experiences we needed to learn and grow as a soul and evolve. And we're often very impatient people, right? So we come back to the world, we're stubborn, we bang our head against all these walls before we find the door and we're like, oh, there's a door there. In fact, there's a handle. I didn't need to bang into the door, but I did. Okay, well, silly me, maybe I'll look for the door next time. <laughs> so good such a good metaphor i want to bounce back into you know the series of events that you just shared and such vulnerability mm -hmm. and openness and the story that you wrote about here you know about your mother and with that like when was it i mean i know that you're on your 33rd birthday you're feeling your mother's presence you have this intense dream but when did you start to have that shift in belief system instead of going from a victim mindset or a falling apart and pieces falling away from you to being cracked open like yeah. and how did you come to that yeah i think it was um shift a slow shift over time um, you know, when I talk about, oh, I went into this Reiki class and realized I was clairvoyant, you know, <laughs> it wasn't like that dur after that day, I suddenly did all of the healing work that I did. I think it, it comes over time, you know, you know, I was suddenly a master healer, you know, I, was I just <laughs> shook my head and then all of a sudden everything was Oof. perfect. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it didn't work like that for me, maybe for some, uh, but for me, I'd like it to was, see who, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it took a lot of years frankly of therapy um, <clears throat> and not and I, in fact I actually went through treatment again later in life I think I don't have this trajectory of recovery that says I got sober on day one I've been sober ever since yeah. that hasn't been my experience nor has it been sort of a, an expectation of mine because that could be another way to to fail yourself and so what I when well, I, in life is like this, I mean, yeah, come on. I mean, <laughs> even at the hospital, how do you tell if somebody's alive? Ding, 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 <laughs> ding. If you're flatlined, you're not living. OK, so right. you're going to have ups and downs instead yeah. of fighting those downs, seeing how they serve you or how they're creating rips in your muscles or rips in your life for you to have a more fulfilled life or a deeper experience or deeper feelings, emotions, yeah. perspective of self. You yeah. know, I think one well, one of the things that was important for me is to have somebody that I trusted that I could go to as a mentor to help me be a mirror because we are mirrors for ourselves yeah and so the first thing i would say is is recognize that i wasn't alone even though at times i felt lonely um, and over time it was me realizing that i had a belief system that was holding me back and where did it come from and i realized it was oh it was because of this past event and so it was mainly a lot of things that happened over time that just basically made whatever uh, shift needed to happen just more apparent in my life at the time for me to say, OK, well, I, I, I'm back up against some some block again. What is this thing that's bugging me now? Oh, it's because I my ADHD is 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 making me like have a really hard time paying my bills or going to the grocery store for something other than what I already have 15 of. You know, so <laughs> for a while, I actually had to go on medication for ADHD and it was not fun. It was actually really, really difficult. And I, yeah. that was about a year and a half where I was like, oh, my God, struggling to get through a day uh, without some kind of a manic episode. And so it took a lot of therapy, a lot of uh, healing, hands on healing work. And I um, mean, it's I've learned all kinds of different things about the types of modalities that could be helpful for folks uh, that have been helpful for me, like Reiki, cranial sacral work, rolfing, you know, these other things that I didn't that we haven't talked about yet was all of the physical traumas that I've had, car accidents. Uh, neck surgery, lung surgery, two head surgeries, 
um, several so, broken body parts. It's been and, crazy. And, and you can tell he's authentically <laughs> being loving and sincere and has a happiness glow to him. Are you hearing the things that this person <laughs> has been through? <laughs> you know, I hope that anybody that's listening that, you know, everybody's events and experiences are uniquely yours and how you process them. But I mean, sometimes when we hear about somebody else's massive um, you know, challenges that they had to overcome and build their self back up again. Uh, it makes us stop for a second and be like, I'm complaining about this, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, not saying that again, I'm not discrediting anybody's stuff that's going on with you, but if, it, if Travis can be the symbol of, of light and what's possible, we just heard him help plan his mom's suicide have multiple uh, stints in, re in rehab and recovery, then how many different injuries that you just d describe and trauma to the physical body among heartbreaks and other things that are common within people's lives, you know? But these are things that a lot of people never go through. And a lot of people don't have head injuries and nasal surgeries and back things and that they ever happen. I mean, a lot of people do, but, you know, knock on wood, I've never had a broken bone in my life, you know? <laughs> so, and that amazes me. You, you know? know, like I think one time I might have broke, like, or, or fractured my finger playing basketball when I was a kid. That's as hard as it gets, you know? Mm. And I mean, I mean, I was like a little daredevil person. So I, it wasn't that I wasn't active and running around, jumping on things, building half pipe skateboard ramps and doing different stuff. I just never had injuries, right? Mm -hmm. And so here I'm hearing this and my jaw's dropping because I know Travis, but I don't know a lot of the stuff that he's sharing right now. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, what's interesting about the story is that when we did the launch, we were really excited because we actually went as a bestseller within a week of launching the book online before we even launched the book in, in uh, the hard copy book, which was like so exciting. Um, well, I didn't it's even... beautiful. And I think people are looking for messages and meaning yeah. and the fact that there's so many, how many different authors are sharing? There's 48 this... total authors. So sharing these yeah. beautiful stories, it's almost like the perfect thing that you can do is like a morning reading or a meditation. You know, you have two months basically worth of going through and doing a story or evening time, bedtime story for yourself to kind of go to bed mm -hmm. too. But it, it, it hones itself perfect for the times and for some type of like ritual that people can use so that they don't have to read it all at once. Yeah. And I'm kind of an inquisitive person. So, uh, you know, diving into why these things are happening for me as we've, you know, as we talk about. And, you know, I, I realized, you know, the experience of my mother's suicide is completely different than my brother's suicide. Mm -hmm. You know, my brother also committed suicide uh, about five years ago, I think it was. And his was suffering from mental health issues and addiction throughout his life. And though it wasn't the first attempt, obviously it would be his last. And I had a yeah. totally different reaction between these two. And it allowed me, because my inquis inquisitor sort of nature, and then I'm starting to work people with people at the soul level. And I'm starting to think, oh, wow, well, we actually have these sort of karmic agreements with each other about how we're going to be in each other's lives and why. And at times we need to separate. Yeah. And every, we are having individual experiences, even though we connect with each other for all the reasons which we want to. I think it's important to recognize that sometimes, you know, we need to recognize that it's not about me. My brother's process, his his experiences weren't about me. They were about him and what he needed. And it allowed me to give some more sort of grace and, and, and compassion for him because at first it made me mad. Yeah. It made me really mad because I was like, it's not fair. Everything that I've been through to fight and struggle and survive and thrive, given what's happened in, in my body and experience, I thought you'd, I thought it was a cop out. You know, at first it might, made me yeah. mad. But then I sort of stepped back and was like, no. Just like now, you know, we're, we're still in a global pandemic, you know. And if we think about it from a glow, from a from a soul level. Why is it that all of humanity brought in this experience into our lives simultaneously? Why right. was it that we decided that we needed a pause on the day to day? And I think it served us all 
yeah. for prioritizing who we are, what we want, what we want to do, who we want to be around, mm -hmm. and to say, you know, life is something that we have been taking for granted. Yeah. And, and what is it that we want to do with our lives? And what we've done and how we've lived. And we, I do think that a lot of people are having a complete evaluation. Yeah. But in that, that doesn't mean that you're not also having a complete struggle with yeah. the coping of change and loss. Because I think at this point, I mean, the first few months in, people were, you know, in shock or denial. And then they were, then they went into a place of still believing and mm -hmm. hopeful that this was all just going to clear away and life was going to go back to normal. Well, now I think that idea of things going back to normal are starting to be a distant memory. <laughs> I don't know that we know, I don't know that we will ever go back to what we perceived well, that, as normal. That, that, that's what I mean. Yeah, you know, before. Like, like people know now that it we can't go backwards, but that's a great metaphor for life. We never can go backwards. It was always an illusion that we could go back. You can't step in the same river twice. You, you, you know, it can look like the same river. It can be in the same geographical location, but that water is different. The rock formations, the algae, everything is different in that moment. And so no matter what, we're moving forward, we're shifting and we're changing, we're evolving. And I think that it's okay to have that whatever process people are going through with it. And it might not be easy. I mean, I'm hearing your story of the processes you went through to get to that, that perspective of, okay, well, how, what is this for me? What does this making this mean? How can I have that be his experience? And that's, you know, his choice, meaning your brother. Yeah. And what am I learning from this? What is this cracking me open to experience a little bit more awareness of? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, um, it is all about perspective and realizing, you know, and I think so many people are caught in the same loop of, of, of um, perceiving that something is happening to them as if they don't have some control over it, despite the fact that maybe that has been their experience for so many years or so yeah. long in their lives. And, and so um, that, that sense of powerlessness can come over us and feel like there's nothing I can do. I'm, I'm done. You know, I've had it. Yeah. And then when we've had it, what do we do to escape the reality that we're experiencing because it's uncomfortable? And, uh, you know, suicide has increased a lot, you know, recently. An increase in hate crimes, an increase in, in just in all kinds of, you know, yeah, because, behaviors that aren't helpful. Yeah, because through that shedding of old belief systems and rediscovering of, of oneself, you go through... You go through the stages of grief and some of the stages of grief are anger, right? Yeah. You know, that's one of them. And so there's going to be this outrage that goes on, whether it's an internal or an outward outrage that is happening. And, you know, hopefully we get to a point of inner peace and community peace and global peace, but we gotta go through the process of releasing. Yeah, and I think, you know, I talk about this, I've taught classes in, um, I was sitting in meditation in my sauna at one point years ago, and I just was asking, okay, what, what would be a great class to teach? And, um, and I saw, and I got this image of, of, a, of a branch breaking. And I said, breaking? Breaking what? And then I heard patterns. And I said, oh, breaking patterns. How do you break a pattern? And the first, the first step is, is awareness that you're in one. Yeah. And so I would say to you who are watching or listening that if there's something that isn't working in your life, you have the you have every ability to to uh, eliminate it from your life. It might not be forever if it's something that you're holding on to unconsciously, but it's something that with awareness you can identify how how has it been serving you? You know, one of the things that I realized as well was that my pattern of addiction was a way to self-punish myself. And what was serving me about my addiction process was the fact that there would be this time where I felt like I deserved to suffer. 
Ah. And I deserved it. I felt like like um, that was a place of comfort and I didn't know any better. And so, you know, me looking at that and saying, no, actually, I don't deserve to suffer. I don't deserve to punish myself. And even even today, there might be times when this old saboteur sort of shows up and yeah. <laughs> screws up this, this whatever moment I might be trying to create for myself. But I can look at that and instead of getting angry or getting into this downward cycle, I can laugh at myself. No, look at that. Look at that popping up today. I don't have to, um, I can do more of a dance with it now. Well, you can disassociate a little bit from it and say, well, what is this really? Right. You know, instead of like being that, that for use of a better term, that a victim of right. that circumstance, right? Now, going back to this book. Yeah. What are some of the other, um, do, do you have any other favorite stories out of this? Or what are some of the other types of stories in here? So we heard a yeah. little bit about what your one and yeah. your contribution uh, to the book is. Um, yeah. It's yeah. So um, what's really cool about some of the other contributors to this book are these are some of the most famous evidential mediums in the world. There and, and so for those of you that, that understand sort of the concept of mediumship is a medium is someone that, that sort of stands between the earth realm and the other side, right? The middle, mm -hmm. the communicator. And a lot of us who do energy medicine or who open up to the uh, spiritual realm are able to communicate as a medium with spirits on the other side. There's a particular style of mediumship that's called evidential mediumship because what happens is these folks are trained to specifically provide evidence of life after death. Mm. And so it's a very popular, uh, you know, you'll see some of the more famous mediums. Thomas John uh, is one. He's got a lot of television shows. He's in Vegas, I think, now. He's a colleague of mine. I know him pretty well. And some other contributors. And what was fascinating to me was as reading some of these other stories was um, sort of the common the commonality between our uh, capacity all of us to to communicate with loved ones on the other side and the um, the common themes that come through of love and support for us and yeah. that, that in fact you know it's our perception of loss that makes us feel that we've lost something right that oh i'm i've lost my mother she's now gone mm. but it's not actually true they they just sort of changed form and they have every ability to connect back with us but it is our limitations in what makes that more difficult for example if i'm uh you know well what i i'll just elaborate a little bit differently um, we all have the ability to connect with loved ones who've passed on the other side. We just have to create the space in our lives to do that. Yeah. And to, and to and be open enough to receive yeah. however that comes through. And to learn how it is that I communicate. You know, some of us are feelers, so we will feel their presence around us. Some of us might be clairvoyant, so we'll get a picture in our mind. Or some of us might actually get a, a common smell. Like I know yeah. my aunt, she always would smell my mom's brand of cigarettes when my mom would come back and visit her after she had passed on. And she would always text me or call me, uh, say, damn it, Travis, I'm smelling Marlboro's, or no, sorry, Winston's, whatever it was, I forget. Um, and, um, you know, your mom's trying to tell me something. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. But it, 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 it's, it's true because they really want to communicate with us. And a lot of times people will, uh, you know, see synchronicities is, is a wonderful way in which the spirit realm likes to communicate with us. You know, things that, that seem unlikely, you know, p pennies in places pennies wouldn't belong or feathers, you know, there's often yeah, those things. Yeah, you hear so. a lot about feathers. Yeah. A lot about numbers, time, mm -hmm. different yeah. words so, and placement. Um, so yeah, there was several stories that uh, w were resonating with me and, um, it was really just great to like participate with these wonderful uh, people to create this wonderful book. I love it. I think that, yeah, I, I hope that everybody will, will, you know, go on Amazon, buy it, leave them a review too, because that also helps more people find it. Um, I got a book myself too. And now that Travis is here, I can get him to sign it. <laughs> oh yes, I'd love to, it's an honor. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. um, and anything more you want to share on this cracked open process? Because I do think that this is such a beautiful, like, mindset in a way of approaching something. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even when you were sharing a little bit about, you know, when somebody loses a loved one and you're talking more so about the mediumship realm and stuff like that, I was thinking, well, that, that can kind of that way and that mindset reframe applies to everything in life. Even if somebody lost their favorite, you know, possession or something, they didn't really lose it. It went and passed on and it's now going to be in a different form. I mean, maybe in a different person's possession, maybe it ends up in a dumpster and goes back into the earth, but it's, it's, it's not gone, yeah. you know? Well, it reminds me because there was one time I was I was taking the bus in Seattle and I worked for the city for many years and and I was reading Abraham Hicks at the time, one of her books, and she was talking about this one exercise you could do for creating more abundance, financial abundance, is to take a $100 bill, put it in your wallet, and then walk about your day and then like tell yourself every time you saw something that you could buy with that $100 to say, oh, I could buy that if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but I could. So that shifts your, your, your frequency into more abundance. Well, the first day I did that, I happened to lose my wallet on the bus. And then that day I was like, you know, crap, you know, it had all my stuff in it. And so I went by because I had this feeling that it would be at the lost and found. And so I went to the lost and found King County. You know, this is a big county in Washington. This is not some small county. It's like millions of people in the city. And so, and they had my wallet and it had been, it would had been given to the driver and, and I opened it and the hundred dollars was gone. <laughs> And my first reaction wasn't what I had expected. My first reaction, I actually laughed. I thought it was hilarious. And my first reaction was, I hope that whoever got that hundred dollars, obviously they needed it more than I did. And I'm so glad that I lost my wallet to be able to give that to them. Well, that's a good now, that, that, that is that. not that is was not a customary experience for me, you know. And I think part of me would have, you know, said you know, shit, <laughs> among other things, you know, <laughs> dang it, you know, somebody stole my money, yeah. right? That's the right and see even getting that, that feeling. And so it is all about perspective and who I want to be in any given moment. So what I would tell people is if you have a pain experience in your life, emotional pain, psychic pain, physical pain, is that you really give yourself some compassion and treat yourself as a best friend mm -hmm. and really ask yourself, how is this serving me? What is this doing for me? You know, pain in the body tells us to stop, slow down and fix. Yeah. And if we're not going to do that, it's going to get worse. It's a, it's a, it's a signal to right. us. It's a, you know? Right. So you can either cover it and try to hide it and make it worse. And take some can, Tylenol and pain right. meds or, right. or say, all, what is this getting caused? And how do I need to address this so it doesn't get worse? Right. Right. Because if you keep on, you know, just hiding and masking the headaches and you don't realize that you have massive dehydration, what other problems are going to happen yeah. or whatever that is? Yeah. Yeah. And then also, I, you know, I suggest to folks is folks not take things so personally. You know, a lot of times things that are happening in our lives have nothing to do with us, but yet we make it about us because we have some narrative in our in our mindset that tells us these are happening things are happening to me yeah and, and that, in narratives around people too yeah. you know I'm like oh they must feel this way or this way or they're doing this and you know the bottom line is I mean think about when you're having an experience most of the time it has nothing to do with the other person why you want to cancel reschedule do whatever <laughs> it is it's, it's everything to do with you and but the person will often make it mean everything to do with them Oh, they right. must not really like me. They must have this, blah, 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 you know, the stories we tell ourselves. Yeah, so I like to, I like to say uh, that the universe is conspiring. You know, we think about that often. We're like, as if it's conspiring against us, but I believe the universe is conspiring for us. And we, we learn the way that we learn. So if you learn through, like me, banging your head against the wall before looking for the door, um, then you can start to maybe slow down and say, okay, well, show me what I need to see today that's going to be in my highest good so that I can stop hurting myself in the process of trying to be free. Yeah. 
And just something as simple as that, saying that over and over, you know, recognizing that the universe is going to communicate often in symbols or metaphors, something our brains don't necessarily understand, but our spirit does. And just, you know, allowing yourself to just be more open to the unique ways that the universe wants to support you because it really does. I love that. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful kind of closing point, you know, to be supported, to reframe and look at how everything's being supported. You're being supported. You're being supported. And, you know, fighting that negativity bias. So we can be, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you the know? limited belief that I am powerless in my life, yeah. despite the, despite your circumstances, you know, you created this in order to expand exponentially. And think of it this way, you know, um, in the third dimension, right, we have physicality. We came because we, we wanted to feel bodies. We wanted to, you know, experience food and eat it and, and like and love and, and sex and, and enjoyment and physical freedom. And so if you are experiencing things that you don't want to experience, then allow yourself to actually come into yourself and, and have, a, uh, you know, sort of an epiphany moment and say, what is it that I really am needing to learn from this experience? What lesson have I still not fully learned? Because you're going to continue to learn these things until you actually get it and move on to the next lesson. I like that. Yeah. Oh, such yeah, a pleasure. You. Always, always a pleasure. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at divineinsight.com and you can find the book on Amazon. Just look at The Last Breath Book. And if you go to Facebook, the, we have a Facebook page, The Last Breath Book Facebook page. We'll be offering some exciting opportunities for readings from some of the authors and uh, special pricing for the book, uh, which will come out soon. Um, but huh. you can always connect with me either either there or you can also book a, a reading through Liberate um, and uh, find me there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Travis. Yeah, I really hope everybody gets this and becomes your 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 morning coffee or your evening nightcap. So <laughs> thank you. And until next time, have a beautiful day. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hey, well, uh, my name is Rebecca. Hi, I'm Reverend Doreen. Hi, my name is Travis. My name is Kimberly. My name is Lily, and I'm an energy healer at Liberate Hollywood. I really believe that everything is transmutable and everything is possible. I believe that we are swimming in a sea of energy and um, that this energy is love, even though I know a lot of the time it doesn't always feel like that. And I do pranic healing, which is energy. I'm a Reiki master, more energy. So what am I? I am a channel for energy to come through me to help you. There really isn't anything that you would need to do to prepare for a session other than be comfortable. The whole goal of the session is to provide you with a warm, comforting, soul and heart centered environment from which to allow healing to occur. No, no, just come as you are. Always just come as you are. Uh, that's my job as a healer to meet you where you are, to figure out what you need. Um, and to give that to you or to guide you also. Um, I'm so honored to be a guide in helping you to connect to help re-energize you, heal you, change your programming so that you're no longer in your way of getting to the things that you desire in your life. My objective working with clients, I guess, would be to help them connect to their divine self uh, so that they can facilitate their spiritual journey and their soul's path. My all forms of energy healing, regardless of what the practitioner says, it is up to the client to change their life. As a practitioner, we're serving as a channel or as, a, as an instrument for God to do the work, but it is up to the client to, to make better choices. I'm most passionate, I think, about being able to create a loving, supportive, and heart and soul-centered environment for clients to heal. I get really excited when I have a new client who's never experienced energy work before, and they tend to 
say that they were drawn or magnetized into the store and they don't exactly know why or what for and it's a it's an opportunity to introduce them to the divine and i think it's a really beautiful thing to have that moment of awareness and that they're in that space of surrender because they don't have any expectations and they really get to see what it feels like to be a spiritual being once you activate that place within yourself uh, it's powerful and it feels so good. It's very healthy for the body. I think it realigns all of your energy. Um, it connects you to source, uh, both within you and outside of you. It's really cool. It's such an honor and a privilege to be in the space where a moment happens and people have this awareness about who they are or they're able to grieve over something they may not have been able to before or they are able to see themselves for who they truly are in a more empowered and soul-centered way. But I'm trying to give you the tools so that when you leave, you feel, you feel connected. Come with an open mind, come with um, humor in your heart, and, and we'll get you on the right path for you. You'll learn more about yourself, you'll let go of things that might be holding you back in your life, and you'll feel more empowered about your decisions. I hope to see you soon. So, expect change. Radical change. <laughs> I laugh, but it's true. <laughs> Thank you, and I wish you love, peace, and higher consciousness.